Here are three COVID-19 headlines from today. Two more Cummins inmates have died from the coronavirus. They both had pre-existing health conditions and were being hospitalized for their COVID-19 symptoms. One inmate was serving a 30 year sentence and the other had life without parole. This makes four Cummins inmates to die from the virus. There are now almost 3500 cases of COVID-19 in Arkansas. That's 59 more than yesterday. Three more people have died overnight from the virus, making the total 76. 52,000 people have been tested in the state, 3000 of those being positive. And the governor will announce more reopenings next week. Tomorrow we will know when large venues and places of worship can reopen. The governor added he and the Department of Health have prepared guidelines for optometrists and they will make an announcement for their reopening sometime next week. Well, for the past months, we've heard some heartbreaking stories about the battles lost from COVID-19, but we've also heard many filled with triumph and recovery. Today, we bring you another fight filled with hope from a University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff alumnus. THV 11's Mercedes McKay has the story. Kenneth Kendrick says he still remembers it like it was yesterday. The date was March 10th. I knew on that day I was not feeling my best, uh, but just still having the mentality that I've always had, you know, as a former athlete, thinking that it's a common cold and hey, let's see if we can go to the gym and sweat and stay out. The former pitcher for the UAPB baseball team decided to continue on with his daily routine, but at the end of the workout, something was different. I just remember being extremely cold, uh, which is very ironic in this particular gym because um, it's a boot camp style, but even when you're not in the boot camp and doing training, the temperature is always set on 80 plus degrees. Deciding to continue pushing through, the 2006 graduate, now living in Georgia, went to work the next day, but still wasn't feeling like himself. My body just felt like as if it was crashing by the hour. Realizing he had a fever, Kendrick went to his doctor who prescribed him antibiotics and high strength Tylenol. But over the next four days, his temperature continued to climb. On March 16th, his wife took him to the emergency room and he immediately was tested for COVID-19 and received a chest x-ray. The doctor immediately just said, wow, this looks horrible. And of course, me not knowing a thing about the medical field, uh, that's when nerve and fear truly began to set in. Hours later, Kendrick learned he had pneumonia in both his lungs and was going to be treated for COVID-19. That's when the fear of not seeing his family began to take a toll on him. Anxiety and panic keeping him up the first two nights. Internally, I was devastated and I was very scared. Physically, Kendrick says the first three days were the toughest and breathing was the hardest part. After spending eight days in the hospital, the father of two was released on March 23rd and three weeks ago, after 21 days of isolation, was finally able to be with his family again. For me, being able to embrace them, me seeing them, uh, that first night me putting them to bed, it was awesome. I mean, that, that was the best feeling ever. Overall, Kendrick says his battle put things into perspective for him and made him realize how blessed he really was. In Little Rock, Mercedes McKay, THV 11 News. Kendrick says he is feeling like his normal self once again. He hopes his story raises awareness about the virus and he advises people to keep it simple and live like you have it. Well, not only retail boutiques and small businesses adjusting to the times, but now so are farmers. The Bernice Garden had its first drive through market today. When the coronavirus first started spreading, farmers markets were one of the first to decide not to operate under the circumstances. Then farmers discovered there was some difficulty getting their products to people without a market. So Bernice Garden came up with a solution. Some of the farm stands can pre-order and people come to the farm and pick up, but not everyone can get out to the farm. So we wanted to bring our farmers back to uh, the Bernie's Garden for pre-order pickup, and that's really what's happening today. People pre-order from the farmers and then drive through Bernice Garden to pick up their items. There is a limited amount of walking around the vendors as long as the social distancing guidelines are being followed. 